downtown Decatur. It's the Faber Files. Hello, I'm your host, Bill Faber. Because democracy demands debate, we present this program of public interest and issues. Extensive conversations heard nowhere else on broadcast TV. Tonight's special guest is Dion Orvis, who is going to be speaking with us about getting rid of the clutter, getting rid of the stress. Dion, welcome to the show. Thank you, Bill. Thanks for being here. Well, many of us know you in the community and your musical background and your organic farming, and now you're into a new venture. Yes, this like so many people my age who thought they might want to retire between 65 and 70. The crash came, and all of a sudden I needed more, more income. So I discovered that uh, uh, less low-stress way of doing that was to sign up and work for some of the home care providers in our community. We have several organizations that do home care. So I did that, and lo and behold, one of the urgent things they'd send you out to help with was to get people ready for apartment inspections. And I had never thought about it one way or the other. I mean, I just assumed you had a relatively clean apartment, and people took care of things like that. But, but it gets to be harder as you get older. And so I found that I was being sent to clients like two or three days before their inspection is due. And that if they couldn't pass their inspection for safety, fire safety, or being able to walk around through the apartment, that they would actually sometimes have to move, have to lose their apartment. So I had never, I had just, it was a whole world different. <laughs> and when I would, I would clean out, I helped somebody clean out their closet or get their kitchen organized. And then they would pass inspection and they could stay in their apartment for another what, year or whatever. And that felt sort of good. And then as I uh, thought about it, I thought maybe there would be a niche you know, for helping people just do the organizing part, the, the decluttering part. And so that's what gave me the idea. And I had minors in college in counseling. So I thought, well, let's just, you know, we'll use an MS and that will just say counseling instead of music. Yeah. So that's how I got into it, very, very simply. Sure, sure. And, uh, well, the relationship is a very important part of the work. Definitely, uh, because clutter, as, as everybody knows, you know, it happens to everybody at various times in our lives. And it's a situation where it's, you're a little bit embarrassed about it, and yet sometimes you need a cheerleader or somebody to push you a little bit. Most people know what needs to be done. That's not the problem. The problem is finding the time and then changing the personal habits that lead to clutter. And there's several times in our, in our life when we're especially vulnerable, and we may chat about different, different ones of those if we want. Um, when you have a new baby, when you bring a baby home, Oh my gracious, the whole house gets, you know, readjusted and, and you have to make room for different equipment and you have to make room for all the, the uh, special things that happen with, with little childhood, the early stages of life. And then I think probably the next uh, uh, big thing would be when a child goes away from home or goes to college. And in these days, the way the economy is, when a child comes home, <laughs> sometimes bringing the grandchildren with them, so that you have these vulnerable times and when your household is being stir it up. Mm -hmm. And uh, another one is when you move. If you move, how many people have unloaded and said, well, I'll just put these cartons here and I'll finish unpacking later because I have to go to my new job and everything is, is up in the air. And lo and behold, eight, ten years later, guess what? Those cartons marked bedroom or living room are still there somewhere. And so we've, we've all you know, had those moments. And then I find out as I uh, relate to my, as we all get older, my older friends, that the energy and concentration and self-discipline that is associated with decluttering and managing a, a neat household, uh, it, it becomes one of those challenges that you have to consciously do when you're older. You have to say, I will you know, get the energy, I will make a time for this, and I will do it. But uh, sadly, sometimes it gets to be a problem within a household and people take sides. You know, sometimes spouses, one is a collector, and one is a clean freak, and it can really lead to problems in, in the relationship. And with an older person, sometimes the whole family may seem like they're against them if they're wanting them to clean out and throw away. But to them, each little item is very special because it has a special memory or a special story. So we, we try to respect that, and we try to work with the owner of the clutter, not the other family members that want something done. Because unless the person claims it, it'll just pop back. Most of the clients in the uh, home care apartments, everything would be cleaned up. They'd pass inspection a week later, everything would be jammed full again. Yeah. So that, and when we get into that, then that's called hoarding, and that's a whole mental health issue that takes very special care. 
And these programs that we love on TV, where they go in and they shovel out the whole house, that's the worst possible way to do it because it's so traumatic to the owner. And it looks good on TV, it's a, you know, it's a big shock, big entertainment value. But it's, it's very horrible for the person whose home is invaded. And they may tell you along just to get the help and <laughs> the publicity, whatever. But it, it won't help their ability to manage their, this stuff. Now, so. Deanne, what I, what, what's remarkable about, about what you bring to this, to this business is that you're a real professional. In fact, you belong to a national organization of organizers. Yes, we try, try to do what we can to get good credentials and be with others who are working on the same things and, and uh, go workshopping and get some, ex some other shared experience. And we, if, you, if you look in the yellow pages or look in the, the big city directories, you'll notice that there's all levels of uh, professionalism or of help available. Everything from sort of a, uh, like a neighborhood church group, a support group that can get together informally. I think that's a big help, you know, just get to talk to somebody, know you're not the only one with the problem. And then all the way to professional business organizers who go in and do a whole corporation or a whole law office or whatever. And the hourly rates accordingly, <laughs> you know, I mean, the, whole, the whole spectrum. So whether, whether people need a little assistance in getting a schedule for cleaning out their kitchen or their garage or whatever. Or, or whether it's business, we we each do what we're best suited to do with our niche. And if we don't have the training or the the equipment, right, then we'll refer you. You know, we'll use the professional organization to to refer people. You know, it's, it's sometimes we can laugh and joke about clutter or a mess, but it really can present serious uh, mental health issues, stress, frustration, anxiety. Definitely. Can you talk about that? Yeah. Well, I came close this morning. <laughs> If you're, you know, people experience these things, but how typical is it you get ready to go somewhere, you've got an appointment, you've got a deadline, and you get ready to leave your house, and you can't find fill in the blank, your keys, your glasses, your, you know, the papers for the meeting or whatever. And that kind of frustration of not being able to find things is the, the sort of the core of the whole, the whole clutter issue, is not to be in charge, not to, to know where the things are that, that you need to function. And each room of your home may be different, but it's based on sort of a lack of decision-making skills or impetus. Uh, a good habit would be like you go around once or twice a day with a basket or a box and you pick up. I did this with a, a young professional mother who had boys, you know, 16-year-old, 5-year-old, 3-year-old. <laughs> there, there was a bit of pickup involved in that household. But you have to make it part of the routine. It has to be a committed time. And the same time you shave, like brushing your teeth or you know, taking your clothes to the cleaner, and it has to be put back into the habit pattern. And if if somebody has been distracted, especially like caregiving, you know, if you're caregiving an elder person, you, your parent or whatever, you you literally lay your life aside a little bit to um, allow enough hours for the 24-hour care or for supervising that care. And so um, the person needs to reclaim the decision-making skills, pick up and put away, that they did before the caregiving. And the caregiving is just this huge scoop, you know, out of, the, out of your life. And then it's like a recovery period afterwards. And we, I don't think in our culture we allow enough for that. Like we don't allow enough time for grieving. People go back to work in two weeks. And it, that, that's just not quite, our systems may not be biologically adapted well for that. Sure. So sometimes you need to, you know, you need to make up, talk about emotions or things that have been 8, 10, 15 years and that the clutters build up because the person just feels overwhelmed by whatever. And so we're, we're going to help with that. We're going to listen and we're going to respect their needs and we're going to set up ways to um, reestablish the, the good habits, the ones that work. Because most people are pretty good housekeepers most of their lives. We just get into these <laughs> these situations that, that need a little extra moral support and a little boost. Some of the situations that you have seen actually present an endangerment to the person. Yes, yes. If an older person has, has stuff, we call them goat tracks. If you collect magazines or newspapers or things, boxes that stack up, then your walking through your home becomes a bit of a challenge. And especially for older people, if they can trip or bump or fall and then bump into things as they fall. Yeah. I have friends that have that problem. So that the keeping your, your home clear and clean for fire hazard and to be able to move around easily and safely and not contribute to trips and falls and loss of balance problems 
um, that's very important. Yeah, on the psychology. Well, oftentimes people have good intentions. They want to get organized. They want to get rid of the clutter, but they <laughs> don't know where to begin. Yes. Tell them where to begin. Well, it's almost like Dave Ramsey. You begin with the smallest. You start with the area or the room that you're in and that you use the most, whether it's just a little powder room, whether it's one edge of your kitchen where you sit down and write bills. You want to have some result the first visit. In other words, I'll stay with you two or three hours and we'll get something done so that you feel that, ah, you know, that open space again. I think there was somebody on TV that did a book. There are many books out about it. It's, it's easy to find the whole shelf in the library. Um, I'm losing that path. We'll go down another one. <laughs> but they, um, you want that feedback of, of a little space that you take back. Mm -hmm. Oh, I remember what it was, that, that this consultant went into a home, and he said, you know what the, what the children do the, when a room is cleared? They dance in the new space. They claim that new space by moving around in it. And that's what we want is to to help that person achieve something that they feel they can move around in a little bit. And whether it's just cleaning up the books and magazines on a coffee table, mm -hmm. maybe that would be the first visit, 30 minutes, an hour, or tackling one bookcase, or tackling one closet if you really felt <laughs> motivated. But break it up, break mm -hmm. it down, and do the, do the smallest, closest thing first. If your family eats in the kitchen, clean up the table area of the kitchen first. If you um, if you have a baby and you've been so busy you haven't sorted and put away the laundry or whatever, then fold and put away that, mm -hmm. that laundry. So we try to, to uh, adapt to the person's situation. We try to listen to them with respect. And then we're, tre we're cheerleaders. We will help with the physical organizing. We're not a house cleaning service, but we'll help you learn, you know, put things where you know where they are. Um, trying to think of other things about the service. Do we want to know about our rates? Is that something? Sure, I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> I've developed a, and just an e even two-tiered plan. Two-tiered is all we're going to do. And the hourly rate for retired people or on fixed incomes is going to be $16 an hour. The rate for people who are blessed to be working and who have a you know, sort of a regular household income will be about a college counseling rate, about 24 an hour. And that's it. We're not going to go higher. We, we feel we can't go too much lower because time is very valuable situation like this, you want to get some results. It sounds like what you can offer people who, if they're stuck, they just mm -hmm. don't know mm -hmm. where to begin, you can offer them a plan and you can get them unstuck. That's, that's the main thing, I think, is, is to be a, a part. That's why we call it Clutter Buster Helper. We are there to be your assistant. We're not, we're not there to do it all for you, but we're there to help your creative juices find your <laughs> the skills and, and, and think of ways of, of organizing things. And, putting them away. And you actually have a different approach to different rooms. For example, you have a different analysis and approach to the kitchen as opposed to the living room in terms of your, your attack of the clutter. Certainly. Sometimes you're going to have to go in and, and, and scrub a little, you know, get, get your cleaning element going as a part of it. And the kitchen, which involves food and spices and you know, all of the, that, uh, would take more, more containers, more labeling. You spend, would spend more time on certain parts of the plan in the kitchen, whereas in the living room, um, it's more pick up and put away or multiple use if you want to store something in a cupboard or in a hassock or being creative. And if, if a household can afford it, <coughs> we'll go shopping with them or with you for the containers. And if you're on a limited, limited budget, we'll try to help you be creative of what materials we use for storage and try to you know think of new things to do. So it's really, it's fun and it's stimulating. It's creative and we want the, the person whose clutter it is to sort of reclaim it. You know, even the process can be fun. Sure. So, for example, if a husband or wife or a daughter and mom were having <laughs> oh, a, a disagreement as to what to do or how to do it, mm -hmm. you could act kind of as a mediator to get things moving. Yes, yeah. yeah. That's, that's one important part. So if, if by having somebody objective, a third party, it's like having a trainer come in for your dog or, or going to a mediator, marriage counseling or something. It's very similar because a lot of the emotional content builds up over years and years. And you need to gently, you know, break that away. What should what should be the first step for someone who is interested in, in, in getting organized? Well, I think just the coming to a decision point. You know, saying I've had it, I can't deal with this any longer. It's it, it depresses you. I mean, you're, you you want to avoid you you sort of 
your perimeters get smaller and smaller as, as the clutter advances. <laughs> you, yes. know? you just you just want to, to uh, stop it. So consciously making a decision. You know, I do not have to be this way. And if if the if you call me in and we, we help and do what we can, if that's not enough, we'll refer you to somebody. I mean, you can you can talk to your best friend, you can talk to your minister, you can whatever it takes to give you a little bit of sense of control. And once you've had that feeling of a little bit of control, then it then it goes quicker. So to get started, mm -hmm. for example, with your rates, uh, a mm -hmm. senior or a retired person could give you a call and you could sit down for an hour for a minimal fee and, right. and sure. lay out a plan mm -hmm. for them. Right, yeah. Yeah, sometimes it won't, doesn't take much. If they know what needs to be done, mm -hmm. we, do, we just help put it in a schedule for them. Sure. Yeah. And then would you be able to follow up with them if they wanted some help maybe down the road and oh, a month definitely. later? Mm -hmm. And this is a good time of year because you need your guest rooms for the holidays. Sure. <laughs> That's how I got one of my clients in Shelbyville. She had a huge Victorian house, and he's the boys, the 16-year-old, 5-year-old, 3-year-old, and a husband who brought home steam tray tables for his catering service. So their, their basement had some unique and large items in it <laughs> that they were working on. And he came from a household where the ornaments were displayed on shelves. I mean, the whole, the whole rooms were full of these little knickknacks and things. And she came from a household that didn't display things like that. They had maybe photos or art or what. And so here we had these two completely different styles of handling materials, handling stuff, plus the laundry from a household of five. Wow. And that was, that was fun. We worked together for about a week and a half. And uh, things like... Um, what do you do with laundry for five when your laundry room is on the first floor and your bedroom and your towels and your dirty clothes are on the second floor? Well, we had a ball figuring out pulleys and baskets. Really? You know, to get them over the railings and get them down. Instead of just th throwing things over and then picking them up again, handing mm -hmm. them twice, we figured out ways to have baskets in each room and then those baskets were put over the rail on a, on a pulley and then they landed down near or the laundry room <laughs> and, and so forth. So it was really fun. And of course, we had toys from the kids. There was one room that was knee deep in toys, and that was sort of fun, you know, to get that straightened out and get all the, the toys for each boy's age. Each boy sure. had a, a, his own area then for the for the toy. How do you handle the the man or woman who says to you, "But Dion, I'm a collector. I collect this stuff." Ah, yes. Okay. Well, there is a difference. A very fine point. If the stuff has value that other people recognize, like you, would you take this to Antiques Roadshow? That would be a good question. Um, it depends on what the items are, and if the person is proud of them and they're organized and they show them, you're pretty much into the collecting field. Mm -hmm. they, have to, they have to have some other uh, recognized value beyond just what you assign. And that's always tough, because you don't like to hear that you're a little whatever is is not really you know worth worth hanging on to <laughs> but the story that, that goes with and that that brings me around to another thing too there's there's different kinds of clutter you know, there's good and bad and, and annoying and, and dangerous but I think one of the, the important things to remember is that everybody assigns meaning to things and there can be good clutter like what if you're in middle middle or later life and you have a hobby like sewing or woodworking or gardening or whatever there's going to be stuff associated with your hobby. And to be neat and well organized does not say you get rid of all of your, your stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, you organize it, mm -hmm. maybe you watch Martha Stewart and do a few things like that in sure. your craft room. But uh, there's certainly some good clutter. And uh, clutter, is, I mean that part, can, if it's created and you're using it to do something, to make something, then, then you can, can be proud of it. And also with, with collections, if you do have things that, that have value and there's a bunch of them, then display them, put them out, don't hide them mm -hmm. away, enjoy them. Yeah, that was, that's an excellent point. <laughs> you, you tell the story of a woman who was very fond and into fabrics, appreciated oh, fine yes, fabrics and was a yes, sewer, so had good. excess fabrics, mm -hmm. and she was able to do something very, with your help, constructive yeah. with her excess fabrics. She couldn't find what to do with them, and, that's, and she didn't want to just send them away to the Salvation Army or you know, get rid of them. So we, I got on the phone for her and just called churches in her town. And I found a sewing group that did quilting and sewing. And when she found out that the Lutheran women would take her fabrics, she let go of all of them. She was thrilled to death to have them used. Mm -hmm. And that's so important that you that the things that do have value and that you've invested meaning. There were several uh, partly done quilts mm -hmm. and that projects that were started and had all the patterns and pieces. 
but only a sower would appreciate would know what to do with them. So we found the right group and connected. And sometimes I will do deliveries like that for people, mm -hmm. special, you know, to their situation. And sometimes I'll haul off the recycling items, but I, I don't do garbage. <laughs> I just I just do re, you know recycle glass and and metal sure. things. If they may, don't have a good easy access system where they live. I, I will just throw it in my car and <laughs> take it to the next recycling center. You know, my grandma Kern kind of had a rule, and she was, of course, available to help my mom, thank goodness, uh, with the <laughs> housework and keeping things in order. But she had a rule that if you hadn't worn something for three years, it was going to Catholic Charities or Goodwill or someplace like that. So she would just clean out those closets with uh, with great abandon. Great. So she had a pattern and knew where how it fit in and, and, and made it. Yeah. What do you think about it, Summer? Is that too severe of a rule for, for no, some people? No, I thought you were going to say one year. Uh -huh. <laughs> but sometimes people, they may change their weight or, mm -hmm. you know, there may be other circumstances for one to three years. But that's a very good, and now we have all these thrift stores that have sprung up. And every every city, every town has some kind of recycle shop. Sure, And sure. you can find your favorites, and then you can even dress out of them and just trade back. Sometimes you can go to a store and donate enough items if there's no cash transaction. You just mm -hmm. donate tops and slacks and you walk out with three new outfits. And sure. <laughs> it's, it's really fun. Well, so far we've been talking about private homes and private mm -hmm. residents, but sometimes small business people and ladies have a little difficulty with organization also. What do you think about your role there? Well, I would be glad to try. Uh, the only thing is I'm a bit old-fashioned and that I'm not fully electrically, electronically competent. So I would be for people who are also not <laughs> into all of the seed storage uh, computers and, and online storage. I may, I may have to become literate in order to continue in this in the field, but uh, right now I'm not. And so I would help with a person's like a small business uh, office or uh, supplies, materials, certainly would help a person think about that. So if a person was interested in getting in touch with you, what would be the best way to just, you know, say hi and, and, and see if they'd be interested? Well, they're welcome just to call and chat about their situation. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you could schedule a time to meet with them yes. if you chose to? Yes, certainly. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. What happens if, if daughter is the caregiver for mom mm -hmm. and daughter recognizes a need to organize, but maybe mom doesn't? How do you negotiate that situation? Listen carefully to both and mm -hmm. help daughter understand that mother, when you when you give up stuff, you give up part of your identity, mm -hmm. and staying alive is sort of fighting, you know, to keep your identity. Yeah. So if the daughter can be helped to understand that, maybe they they could go at it a little gently. And the important part there is you must leave authority with the owner of the clutter, with the, the mother. And as hard as it is for the daughter, the daughter has the rest of her life to straighten up however she wants. But depending on the the mother's health, um, it could be a very devastating issue for her. So I don't know, I mean, I would just, I would reflect, I would, you know, tell them what I'm hearing them each say, and if, if it's a, a hazard, you know, like a, a danger, food, maybe she doesn't keep her refrigerator clean out, well, you have, you do those, you just don't tell them and you mm -hmm. just do it if it's in the kitchen out of sight. And the same way, um, sometimes, well, things like containers will stack up. Well. Leave a selection, leave a half a dozen or leave a dozen. But if, if plastic is accumulating or something's unsanitary, then you, you are responsible in terms of health and safety, just, just to work on that. But, oh, they're difficult, difficult situations, yes. So if, 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 if a viewer wants to hire a professional organizer like mm -hmm. you, what questions should they be asking you when they say, Deanne, I need some information? Yeah, well, they can be, uh, they can be asking about the Timeline, with the, the physical setup, you know, what, how many rooms or, I mean, I need to know about their situation as well as, as they need to know what, what I can do for them. And they, we need to know what kind of space is involved, you know, whether we're talking about a Victorian mansion with nine rooms or an apartment with two rooms. We both have to square our expectations so that they are not expecting me to come and clean out a whole <laughs> house or, you know, something like that. Just, it's, it's not a situation where you hire me and I go do it and then you come back in later. That is a house clean out service, you know, like an estate uh, settlement type of thing. Uh, my emphasis is more on your, your own personal organizing, like how to put your bills in a 12 pocket folder or just, you know, really, really basic simple mm -hmm. stuff. And to organize your home so that you can find everything and that everything is appropriate, makes sense to you, to the owner. 
that you can go back and, and make your system work. Sure. Mm -hmm. Have you found that once you get your clients organized that they have a different feeling, a different attitude? I think that they feel lighter mm -hmm. and feel relieved. Um, yeah, yeah, I think that they do. They just, they feel, ah, you know, that, that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, Dan, yeah, the, really. the time has just flown. Thank you for this information. Oh, it's sure been is. something that touches all our lives. Do so, we want a phone number? Or Sure, what's your phone number? <laughs> I'm in the area code 217, and my cell phone is 615-4618. We'll have that displayed on the screen for our viewers. Thank you so much. Good luck.